The Mechanism of Orpheus I apologize in advance, dear reader, for my lack of precision in defining the location and time in which this story unfolds. A narrator typically should provide these crucial details to situate the reader, but allow me to tell a story that floats beyond these constraints. In this tale, reality is fluid, and the characters dance on the edge between the real and the imaginary. Timelines intertwine, and geographical boundaries dissolve. It is a place where dreams meet reality, where fantasy and reason entwine in a fleeting embrace. Instead of tying our narrative to a specific point in space and time, I invite you to embark on a journey where emotions, experiences, and encounters in this dreamlike universe are of utmost importance. Allow yourself to get lost in the crossroads of the mind, where the only compass is imagination, and the only constant is change. Chapter 1, The Artifact in the Forest it was a peaceful morning in the small riverside village. Sun rays danced on the dirt paths as the villagers went about their daily activities. However, the usual serenity was abruptly interrupted by a strange event. From the cloudless sky, an unknown object descended in a vortex of light. A murmur of astonishment echoed through the village as the residents watched a metallic artifact land with an enigmatic and indescribable appearance. It resembled nothing they had ever seen before. The local people, an ancient and peaceful civilization, gathered around the artifact, filled with wonder and apprehension. They looked upon it with curiosity but also a sense of fear of the unknown. The shimmering structure exuded an enigmatic aura, as if it contained deep and dangerous secrets. The village leader, a wise local elder, cautiously approached the mysterious object. His discerning eyes examined every detail, but even he, with all his wisdom, couldn't decipher its origin or purpose. It was a mystery that defied any rational explanation. The artifact was a complex architectural piece, with intricate geometric patterns carved into its metallic surface. It seemed perfectly balanced between the ancient and the futuristic, as if it had been transported from an unknown time and place. A pulsating aura emanated from it, an energy that seemed to communicate with the senses of anyone daring to approach. The villagers anxiously debated what to do. Some feared that the artifact brought unknown dangers, while others saw an opportunity to unravel the secrets of the universe. The division was evident, but everyone shared the same feeling that their lives would never be the same again. Meanwhile, rumors about the mysterious object spread beyond the local borders. News of the discovery reached the ears of authorities in the capital, awakening their interest and fear. Experts in archaeology, anthropology, and exact sciences were summoned to investigate the inexplicable phenomenon. The world watched with anticipation, awaiting answers to questions they didn't even know how to formulate. The artifact had the power to challenge everything humanity understood about itself and the universe. As the sun set over the location, the artifact remained there, an enigma echoing mystery and danger. While the village prepared to face the consequences of its discovery, the fate of the entire civilization seemed to depend on their ability to unravel the hidden secrets at the heart of this object. Chapter 2 The Transformation As the days passed since the discovery of the artifact, a disturbing phenomenon began to unfold among the villagers. Those who approached the mysterious object started undergoing an inexplicable transformation. The enigmatic aura emitted by the artifact seemed to have a profound effect on their bodies and minds. The affected individuals, once vibrant and full of life, now moved in a disjointed manner, as if they were losing their humanity. Their facial expressions became empty, their eyes distant and dull. Apathy dominated their actions and words, and their ability to reason and communicate diminished with each passing day. Those who transformed into these, bestialized, 
as they came to be called, were no longer capable of performing simple everyday tasks. They wandered the village paths in a state of stupor, stripped of their clothing and behaving like stray animals. Instead of eating prepared food, they started consuming insects and fallen fruits, satisfying their hunger in a primitive way. The community watched with perplexity and despair as their loved ones and friends rapidly deteriorated. The horror of witnessing the gradual loss of their identities was unbearable. Bereaved families tried to understand what was happening and sought answers to reverse the devastating situation. Tension spread throughout the village as people took to the streets, afraid of getting close to the bestialized. Survivors sought ways to protect themselves and avoid contact with the artifact, fearing that the transformation might affect them as well. However, amid all the desolation and sadness, there were those who began to question whether the transformation was truly a curse or if there was a deeper purpose behind it. Some believed that the artifact had the power to open doors to a new form of existence, a transcendence beyond conventional humanity. These divergent theories fueled tension in the village, further dividing it. While some sought a way to reverse the transformation and bring their loved ones back to normality, others embraced the idea of an unknown evolution and surrendered to the transformation, hoping to discover a deeper meaning in this bestial state. As the fate of the village remained uncertain, the place continued to be shrouded in mystery and darkness. The bestialized wandered through the wilderness, while the mysterious artifact remained as a silent witness to their transformation. It remained to be seen if the hope for a cure would arise or if everyone would be dragged into an unknown and unfathomable destiny. Chapter 3 The Enigma of the Forest Faced with the relentless advance of the transformation plaguing them, the community decided to turn to science in search of answers. The most renowned scientists and researchers gathered to plan expeditions in the hope of unraveling the cause of this mysterious transformation and finding a possible cure. Equipped with state-of-the-art protective clothing, gas masks, and isolation technologies, the teams of scientists ventured into the dense forest surrounding the village. It was a dark environment, where the lush vegetation seemed to have a life of its own, vibrating with unsettling energy. Despite all the precautions taken, as the scientists ventured deeper into the forest, they felt a pervasive presence, an indescribable force that seemed to penetrate through their defenses. They collected samples, conducted experiments, but the results were always frustrating. The causative agent remained an unsolvable enigma. As the expeditions continued, one by one, the scientific teams began succumbing to the same fate as the bestialized. Those who had entered the forest returned unrecognizable, devoid of any trace of humanity, consuming insects and remains like their predecessors. The scientists who transformed, now bestialized, could not resist the call of the forbidden forest. They abandoned their research and joined the early affected, uniting in a bestialized community that seemed to find some kind of peace in that primal state. The local people, hopeful for a solution, witnessed with sorrow the failure of the scientific incursions. The forest, once considered a source of life and beauty, had become a sinister stronghold where the enigma of the transformation seemed to grow stronger. Sadness and despair overwhelmed the hearts of those who saw their loved ones lost forever, now part of an unimaginable reality. The village became increasingly isolated, fearing both the forest and the transformation that resided within it. Despite all attempts, the scientists were still far from comprehending the mystery that permeated the forbidden forest. The mysterious artifact, with its enigmatic aura, seemed to lie at the center of this catastrophe, but the truth remained beyond human reach. As the population fought against desolation, the forbidden forest continued to echo dark secrets and attract more victims to its enigmatic essence. Hope seemed increasingly fragile, 
and the only certainty was the deep connection between the transformation and the impenetrable forest. Thus, the village remained in suspense, enclosed in its uncertainties and fearing the day when the boundary between humanity and bestiality would be completely erased. The quest for truth continued, while the darkness of the forest advanced upon those who ventured into its domains. Chapter 4, The Forest's Oblivion After decades of failed attempts to understand and control the transformation that plagued the forest, the authorities made a difficult but inevitable decision. Faced with the uncontrollable spread of the evil and the impossibility of finding a solution, isolating the contaminated area was considered the only viable option. A perimeter of isolation was established around the forbidden forest, preventing access to anyone. The boundaries were fortified with electrified fences, security posts, and constant patrols to prevent the transformation from spreading beyond the village's borders. The village and its sorrowful history were swept into the forgotten pages of time, kept secret and anonymous. The contaminated area became forbidden land, a place forgotten by the rest of the world. Those affected by the transformation, both the initial victims and the bestialized scientists, were condemned to live in perpetual isolation. The once prosperous and vibrant village now found itself in mourning. The remaining population learned to live with the pain and trauma, trying to rebuild in the shadow of that silenced tragedy. The outside world remained unaware of the village's existence and its struggle against the unknown. Subsequent generations grew up with the story of the Forbidden Forest as a tragic legend, passed down through oral tradition, but without a true understanding of the horrors that occurred there. Memories faded with time, leaving behind only a distant echo of what was once a vibrant and hopeful community. As the decades passed, the Forbidden Forest remained shrouded in its dark mystery. Its dense and enigmatic vegetation embraced the secrets buried within its depths, and the bestialized beings continued to live in a primitive state, feeding like wandering animals. The rest of the world moved forward, immersed in its own concerns and problems. The village and its history were swept under the collective rug of forgetfulness, a lost remembrance amid the vastness of time. While the forbidden forest remained isolated, the world continued its journey, oblivious to those who lived in the shadow of darkness. The village, once pulsing with life and hope, had now become a sad reminder that not all stories have a happy ending, and some are doomed to be forgotten. Chapter 5 The Desperate Attempt After decades of isolation and oblivion, a renowned scientist, Dr. Volpe Muniz, decided to challenge the boundaries imposed by the Forbidden Forest. Driven by a mixture of curiosity and determination, he believed to have found an innovative approach to penetrate the depths of darkness and uncover the hidden secrets. Equipped with new technologies and knowledge acquired throughout his career, Dr. Muniz ventured beyond the boundaries of the isolation perimeter. He believed he had developed a highly advanced protective suit capable of filtering and neutralizing the agent causing the transformation. Initially, his incursion seemed promising. Dr. Muniz cautiously explored the forest, collecting samples and conducting experiments in search of answers. He was determined to unravel the mystery that had consumed the village for so many decades. However, as time passed, Dr. Muniz began to notice subtle changes in his own body. Apathy started to settle in his mind, and his connection to humanity seemed to slowly fade away. The insidious transformation, which had victimized so many others, began to embrace the determined scientist as well. Dr. Muniz found himself trapped in an anguishing dilemma. He had ventured beyond the borders of the known, hoping to bring answers and a possible cure, but now he faced his own dark fate. The Forbidden Forest had claimed another victim. As his humanity faded away, Dr. Muniz joined the ranks of the bestialized, stripped of any trace of rationality. 
his scientific knowledge and discoveries were lost in the darkness of the transformation, leaving only a vague and distorted memory of what could have been. The community, unaware of Dr. Muniz's final attempt, felt the loss of someone who had tirelessly dedicated himself to the search for answers. His sacrifice was not in vain but rather another grim reminder of the merciless nature of the forbidden forest. While Dr. Muniz's story merged with the shadows of that cursed place, the forest continued to reign in its silent solitude. The mystery persisted, the answers remained elusive, and those who ventured in search of the truth encountered only an inevitable fate, transformation. Dr. Muniz, once a brilliant scientist, had now become another resident of the Forbidden Forest. His legacy would be remembered as a desperate attempt to confront the unknown, a tragic testimony that even the brightest can be swallowed by the darkness lurking beyond the boundaries of human understanding. Chapter 6 The Relentless Pursuit Dr. Muniz's son, Lucas, decided to follow in his father's footsteps and continue his relentless search for answers. Driven by the hope of rescuing his father and all those who were swallowed by the Forbidden Forest, Lucas dedicated himself to studying his father's research and seeking financial and logistical support for his endeavor. Lucas Muniz knew that the challenge was enormous. Convincing authorities and institutions to support a dangerous and seemingly senseless expedition would be a daunting task. However, he was determined to prove that his father had not been lost forever and that there was still a chance to reverse the transformation, and bring back those condemned to oblivion. In his search for support, Lucas was invited to participate in a radio program to share his story and his goals. During the interview, the interviewer, named Carlos, showed skepticism and even disrespect towards Lucas treating him like a conspiracy theorist or a follower of absurd theories. Carlos ridiculed the idea of a forbidden forest, comparing it to the most outrageous conspiracy theories. He mocked Lucas's ambitions, questioning his sanity and calling him a lunatic. The tone of the interview became hostile and provocative, while Lucas tried to maintain his composure and explain his cause seriously. However, Throughout the interview, some listeners started calling the radio station, expressing their dissatisfaction with Carlos's disrespectful attitude. They showed support for Lucas and his relentless pursuit, believing in his determination and the possibility that the Forbidden Forest could hold secrets beyond conventional understanding. But among the callers, one stood out. It was from a man who preferred not to identify himself but claimed to have heard about a mysterious man in black who had been spotted in the Forbidden Forest. According to him, the man wore a black suit, a cape, and had long nails. At first, Carlos treated this information as just another conspiracy theory, dismissing it as fantasy and fabrication. However, more calls started coming in from people who claimed to have seen photos and videos of this man in black circulating on social media. The insistence of the callers intrigued Lucas. While the interviewer tried to steer the conversation away, downplaying the claims of the callers, Lucas felt a spark of interest ignite within him. That story of the man in black seemed to have an inexplicable connection to the Forbidden Forest and the transformation that had consumed his father. Despite Carlos's skepticism, Lucas began to wonder if that man in black could be a key element in understanding the truth hidden in the forest. He decided to investigate further, collecting accounts of sightings, analyzing photos and videos, and trying to find any clues that could bring him closer to rescuing his father. The interview came to an end, but the flame of curiosity had been ignited. Lucas Muniz knew he could not ignore this potential lead, even if others considered it a conspiracy theory. He was willing to explore all possibilities to unravel the enigma of the Forbidden Forest, including the existence of this mysterious man in black. 
Lucas knew that his journey now had a new direction, and he was determined to move forward, facing the challenges that would arise in his path. The man in black became more than just an intriguing figure. He was an important piece in the puzzle that could finally bring answers and hope to all those lost in the darkness of the Forbidden Forest. Chapter 7, At the Gates of the Forest Two years had passed since the radio interview, and Lucas Muniz persevered in his relentless pursuit. With the support of financiers and a dedicated team, he finally managed to gather the necessary resources for the boldest expedition the Forbidden Forest had witnessed in decades. The preparation was meticulous. Lucas and his team carefully studied the reports about the man in black, mapped the area of the forest where the sightings were most frequent, and planned every detail of the incursion. Special protective suits were developed, state-of-the-art equipment was acquired and everyone received rigorous training to deal with the unknown dangers that awaited beyond the known boundaries. The day of departure arrived. Lucas led the team toward the entrance of the Forbidden Forest, carrying with him the determination and hope of finding his father and unraveling the mysteries hidden within those dark trees. Everyone's hearts were racing, a mix of anticipation and apprehension filling the air. As they reached the edge of the forest, the sight before them was imposing. Dense vegetation stretched as far as the eye could see, as if nature itself was trying to conceal long-buried secrets. The first rays of sunlight filtered through the leaves, casting mysterious shadows on the ground. In silence, Lucas took the first step, followed by the members of his team. Each step was cautious, every movement filled with expectation and tension. They penetrated the forest, leaving behind the safety of the outside world and venturing into unknown territory. Chapter 8, The Revelation Lucas Muniz cautiously advanced through the dense vegetation of the Forbidden Forest. Every step he took was enveloped in an unknown mystery and a palpable tension in the air. His heart pounded, while his eyes scanned the surroundings for any sign of his father and those who had been transformed into bestial beings. As he ventured deeper into the forest, Lucas came across a disturbing sight. Men and women around him roamed naked in a bestial state, resembling animals in their behavior. They walked clumsily, seemingly having lost all human consciousness. The scene was shocking and distressing. Lucas felt a mix of compassion and horror as he observed the transformation that had befallen those people. Knowing that his father could be somewhere among those bestial figures filled him with sadness and determination. He was willing to find a way to reverse that condition and bring back the lost humanity. While continuing his search, Lucas spotted something peculiar in the distance. A solitary figure, dressed in a black suit and cape, just as described by the radio listeners. His heart raced with excitement and intrigue. Could that be the man in black who had become a central piece in this enigma? Lucas knew he couldn't let this opportunity slip away. Determined, he quickened his pace, trying to approach the mysterious man in black. Closer and closer, his legs seemed to weigh heavier, but curiosity propelled him forward. However, before he could reach the man in black, a sudden movement caught his attention. The figure disappeared into the foliage, as if it had merged with the forest. Lucas stood still for a moment, surprised and frustrated by the swiftness of the event. Still, a spark of hope ignited in his heart. The fact that he had caught sight of that man in black was a sign that he was close to uncovering the hidden secrets in the Forbidden Forest. Lucas knew he would have to proceed with even more determination and courage to discover the truth behind the transformation that plagued those lands. Chapter 9, The Melody Lucas and his team decided to camp in the area, sleeping in shifts, alert for any threats that might arise as well as a possible contamination of their suits which, up to this point, had served their purpose well. 
Amidst sleep, Lucas Muniz begins to awaken when he realizes he is once again facing the man in black, whose intriguing appearance now revealed itself as a holographic reproduction. Next to the hologram, at Lucas' feet, lay a metallic artifact that seemed to be a device for playing ancient earth music. With a mixture of curiosity and excitement, Lucas reached out and touched the artifact. Immediately, the artifact began to play loudly and clearly, Z du Kaixao, Zombie, E Lampiao, filling the environment with melody. It was the track Rata Mahata by the Brazilian band Sepultura. Feeling for the mechanism, Lucas managed to stop the signal. The bestialized beings, who had previously wandered without consciousness, began to react. Their eyes, once dull and empty, now sparkled with a glimpse of recognition. The expressions of confusion and savagery gradually faded, replaced by a look of clarity and understanding. It seemed that besides the music, the artifact possessed some frequency or electromagnetic wave that induced hypnosis in those who approached it. In the distance, among the trees, Lucas noticed a familiar face he hadn't seen in a long time. Amidst tears of joy, Lucas saw his father emerge from that sea of transformation, safe and sound. The two embraced tightly, words being unnecessary to express the intensity of that reunion. Years of anguish and uncertainty had come to an end. Now, father and son were reunited witnesses to the resolution of a mystery that had plagued their lives and the lives of so many others. However, even with the relief of the reunion, a question persisted, where did that artifact come from, and how had it arrived there? It was an enigma that remained unanswered. Perhaps they would never know the exact origins or the means by which that device had found its way to the forbidden forest.